Hello friends, this is Prabhjo Singh, your host today. And today I'm going to talk about elections in Punjab. I know elections and Punjab holds tremendous interest worldwide because this is one state which has been in the news for various reasons. Maybe its people are a global community. Maybe they have hard working. Maybe they were once sword arm of India. Maybe they were the sports arm of India. And now they are the grain basket of India. And being a small state with 13 parliamentary constituencies out of 547 in India, they still hold a lot of political influence. It is Punjab which gave India collision in politics. The collision started from Punjab and Punjab has given the oldest and the largest surviving collision between Shromni Akali Dal and Bharatiya Janata Party. Though this collision ended this year because of differences between the two partners over the issues of farm laws, but still BJP, the ruling party at the center, is continuing a partnership with a faction of a breakaway Shromni Akali Dal, the Sanjukt Akali Dal, led by Mr. Sukhdev Singh Dinsa. So, Congress and Aam Admi Party, the two other major contestants are fighting independently, while Akalis, after leaving BJP, have found in Bhavjan Samaj Party their new alliance partner. So the third alliance in the fray is of the farmers, the Samyukt Kisan Party and Samyukt Samaj Mocha, SMM and SMP. So they are the third coalition and in all 11 parties, including Congress, Aam Admi Party, Akali Dal, Bharati Janta Party, Sanyukt Samaj Mocha, Samyukt Samaj Party, CPI, CPM, Bhajan Samaj Party, CPI ML, they are all in the fray. In all, there are 1,304 candidates who will be vying with each other for political supremacy in Punjab. On 20th February, more than 2 crore voters will exercise their franchise at 2,470 polling centers. So their, whatever they decide will be sealed in electronic voting machines and results will come out on 10th of March. This is an interesting battle. Punjab has always been, they say, a leader in politics, though very small, but very meaningful. As I said, Punjab witnessed after 1947, when India got freedom, a political setup in which the ruling Congress, which was the oldest national party, and Shromni Akali, the, the regional party, they were collaborators. They were in coalition. So they formed a government from 1947, and that government continued till 1966. In between, in 1962, when the Akali Dal wanted to start Punjabi Suba Morcha, the Akali Dal president, Master Tara Singh, asked his party legislators to come out of the government and join Shromni Akali Dal and as a opposition party. But only five of 26 MLAs came out. And once the reorganization was done on November 1, 1966, Congress lost its supremacy in Punjab. And for the first time after independence, in 1967, when first elections were held after reorganization, a coalition government, United Front government, came into power. It was led by Justice Gurnam Singh. And since then, since 1967, it has been either Akali Dal or Congress who have been ruling Punjab. So this they used to say it's alternate terms. Once Congress will come to power, next time it will be Akalis. And Akalis, at most of the time, they had in their partnership, either Jansang or Bharati Janta Party. And this was one of the oldest coalitions in Indian politics, Akali Dal and BJP. But this coalition came to an end last year when Akalis had differences with the national ruling party, BJP, over the 
disputed or controversial farm laws. So ultimately, those farm laws were withdrawn. But Akali's and BJP parted ways. Akali's found a new partner in Bahujan Samaj Party. And when they go to the coming elections, they are with BSP, a party which was founded by Kanshi Ram and now led by Mayavati. Other than Akali and BSP alliance, there are two more alliances in the fray this time. And one of them is of the BJP, which still continues with a faction of Shromni Akali Dal, the Sanyukt Shromni Akali Dal, led by Mr. Sudev Singh Dean Sa. Dean Sa's party and a breakaway group of Congress, led by former Chief Minister Captain Amrinder Singh, they are in partnership with BJP for this election. So they have a try some alliance. And the third alliance is of two parties of the farmers, Samyukt Samaj Morcha, led by Balbir Singh Rajewal, and Samyukt Samaj Party, led by Gunam Singh. So they have joined hands and they are contesting all 117 seats. So this time there will be three coalitions in the fray and in all 11 parties, 1,304 candidates. Interestingly, this is one election where four chief ministers, including incumbent Charanji Singh Chani, are in the run. Chani is the chief minister face for Congress, and he is contesting from two constituencies, Chamkor Sahib, his home constituency, and Padod in Sangrur. Prakash Singh Badal, who has the distinction of serving Punjab as a chief minister for five terms, and is the oldest candidate in the fray at 94, he is contesting from Lambi in Freedkot. So Prakash Singh Badal, will be there at 94 as a Shromni Dalai candidate and his son, who was Deputy Chief Minister and during his last government led by Mr. Prakash Singh Badal, is contesting from Jalalabad. And in Jalalabad, Sukhbir Badal, who is a sitting MP, is being opposed by Mohan Singh Falyanwala, who was once MP from Bhavjan Smaj Party, but now he is representing Congress. Interestingly, the president of Punjab Pradesh Congress Committee, Navjot Singh Sidhu, who was a hot candidate for chief ministership, is facing another Akali stalwart, Bikram Singh Majithia, in his home constituency, Amritsar East. And this will be very interesting. You see, there are lots of contests which are very, very sensitive and very keenly poised. For example, former Punjab Chief Minister Zinder Kaur Bhattal was the first woman Chief Minister of Punjab. She is contesting from Lara Gaga and where she will be opposed by Punjab's former Finance Minister and Mr. Sukhdev Singh Dinsa's son, Parminder Singh Dinsa. Interesting, isn't it? So, there are wheels within wheels and contests within contests. There are dissensions, there are revolts in parties, there were change of faces in parties. Now, for example, Fadeh Jang Singh Bajwa, who was Congress MLA, is facing another Congress MLA, Ashni Sekri, in Batala. Ashni Sekri is representing Congress and Fadeh Jang Bajwa crossed over to PJP. So this is Another contest that will evoke a lot of interest in Punjab. There is There are three Olympians. Interestingly, two of them are face to face with each other. Two times MLA from Jalandhar Kent, Bhargat Singh, who was, who is still the Minister of Sports and Education in Charanji Singh Chani's government, is facing Olympian Surinder Sodi. Jalandhar Kent, and it's the first time two Olympians are facing each other. Though another Olympian and captain of 1975 World Cup hockey team, Ajit Paul Singh, was initially declared a candidate 
by Captain Amrinder Singh's Punjab Lok Congress, but Ajit Pal had to stay away from the contest because he had problems in getting his vote registered in Punjab. Ajit Pal lives in Delhi these days, so he couldn't contest. The third Olympian in the contest is Sajjan Singh Chima, a basketball player. Last time he also contested on AAP ticket from Sultanpur Lodi. But this time he is back there again, hoping this time he'll win. In between, he changed his loyalties to Shromni Akali Dal, but then came back to AAP. Then there are officers who held ranks, who held senior positions in the Punjab's administration. Kamar Vijay Pratap Singh. He is contesting, he resigned from IPS. He is contesting from Amritsar North and is facing Anil Joshi of Shromni Akali Dal. And then there is a Kabal Singh Lalpura. He also retired in IG and joined BJP. He is contesting from Rupnagar. He is now with National Minorities Commission. So then there are IS officers also. Mr. Sucharam Ladhar, he is a BJP candidate from Kill. And then Charanji Singh Channi, for example, in his home turf in Chamkor Sahib, is facing Harmon Singh Sandhu, who was also an AIG in police and resigned. He is son of Mrs. Satwant Kaur Sandhu, who was a senior Akali leader and used to represent Punjab, and, uh, used to represent Chamkor Sahib in Punjab Assembly. So interestingly, there are artists also. Not only Bhagwan Ban, who is a chief ministerial candidate for AAP, who is a famous comedian and what not. Sindhu Musewala is in the run from Mansa. He is on the Congress ticket. So you see, a lot of people of different backgrounds are in the fray this time in an election that has seen lots of crossings or defections. More than 100 defections, including MLAs, took place on eve of elections. And what shape Punjab's political setup will have will only be known after the February 20 poll. And to make sure each party is able to lure as many voters as they can. They are coming out with lots of promises. Siddhu, for example, has been going around with an idea of Punjab model based on Guru Nanak Dev's concept of Tera Tera. So he's come out with a 13 point Punjab model and where he tries and we, where he says he'll try to restructure Punjab's economy, make it self-reliant and bring it out of the debt and make it very reliable and healthy. His promise is likely to be endorsed by Congress High Command when it comes out with its election manifesto for Punjab. Prime Minister Narendra Modi is now showering lots of praises on Sikh community. Wherever he goes, he talks about Sikh community, its role and its commitment for the overall development of India. Recently, when he was in Gujarat, he talked about Sikhs in Kutch and said he appreciates the role of Sikhs and its community. He's also all out for their farmers, though he remained in controversy over the controversial farm laws which later he withdrew and he says the farmers will must get or they will get whatever is due to them. The BJP, for example, has promised all the debts, all the loans of the farmers who have land holdings of five acres or less will be waived by the BJP government if it comes to power. They are also promising lots of other incentives to the farmers besides Punjab. Similarly, Shromani Akali Dal has also made lots of promises, including interest-free loans to youth of Punjab in case they want to pursue their 
education anywhere in India or outside India. Besides, freebies to weaker sections, including power, free units, all are being promised by all parties. Some parties are also coming out with uh, tools to women, especially financial aid. For example, Kali Dal says 2,000 rupees a month and AAP says, uh, Congress says 1,000 rupees and also a scooty to college going girls. So lots of things, lots of incentives, but whether these commitments or these promises made on eve of elections are honored, only time will tell because previous experience of Punjab voters has been dismal. And many young, young voters in Punjab, they say, don't make these false promises. Instead, give us quality, quality education, quality health care, quality drinking water, and good infrastructure at affordable prices. Don't make education out of reach of a common man or medical treatment out of reach of a common man. Make them affordable and make them effective and good. So this is what Punjab is in for today. The elections will bring out what the voters want, whether they want or they get lured by promises of one party or they use their discretion in choosing their candidates. Only time will tell. And we hope, like previous election, the polls will be peaceful and Punjab will have a stable and forward-looking government which will work for overall development of people of Punjab. And that's all for this episode. And hopefully, when we meet each other next time, I'll come out with something more. Thank you very much. Have a good day.